affordable drum microphones that sound good or even great, boys and girls. Do they exist? That is today's question. I have tested quite a few microphones and the answer is yes, there are some pretty cool sounding ones out there. I'm going to show you all those microphones today and to make this video even better, you can win a pair of ribbon microphones, SE Electronics X1R microphones. Just keep on watching. But first of all, let's have a listen to the microphones I found. They sound like this. But what does affordable actually mean? What does it mean to me? First of all, I was not looking for the cheapest shit available. I was not looking for the cheapest SM57 clone or for the cheapest Chinese ribbon microphone, especially because they very often have quality issues. So I might get a good microphone and you order the same one and you might get a bad one and then you blame me. I don't want that. So I decided to just check out microphones from, let's call them reliable, decent companies that come up with their own designs. And I quickly ended up at basically SE Electronics because they make a lot of cool stuff. By the way, this video is not sponsored. I'm not getting anything from SE Electronics for doing this, just to make this clear. Anyway, I was looking for microphones you can make a record with, microphones that sound professional, maybe not high-end, but professional. So that's what I'm what I'm looking for. I know you want me to make a video about this new Behringer drum mic set, five microphones for 75 euros. Uh, if you keep on bagging, I, I might do that. But that's not, that's not for today. It, it also feels a little a little bad, right? I don't know how much third world exploitation is that a word went into that product. I don't want to know, but I'll maybe do that in the future. Let's see. Today we're talking about professional microphones, professional microphones that, yeah, don't break the bank. Let's go. Normally when I record drums, I use microphones in all price ranges. So I use microphones that cost less than $100, but I also use microphones that might cost $2,000 or $3,000. It depends. In this video, I try to replace the expensive ones with cheaper, more affordable alternatives. But let's start with a really, really easy recommendation. Let's start with a snare microphone. I have got three favorite snare drum microphones that I use all the time, and this is one of them. This is the SE Electronics V7X. I think there are different versions of this one. You will find links to all the microphones in the description below. I think this one is right now at 79 euros here in Germany. So it's basically the same price like your SM57, the classic microphone on snare. This microphone sounds a lot better to my ears. It sounds more modern. It's a very modern design, aluminum voice coil, neodymium magnets. So this microphone sounds fast, nice transients. It sounds crispy. It has more highs. It sounds less boxy than your 57. I use it all the time. It sounds great. Um, the only problem you might have with this microphone is the shape, the size, you know, this. Don't make any jokes about this shape, please. Yeah, it's, it can be a little tough uh, to place, you know, on, on, a, on a drum kit, on a snare, compared to microphones that are a lot smaller. For example, SE Electronics are also um, doing this microphone, which is the V-Beat. And I think it's the same capsule like the V7X. So I haven't done an A-B test, but it sh should sound pretty much the same. But of course, this is a lot better to place. But you know, I don't know why, but this is twice the price. Okay, I think this is 180 euros or something. So I recommend this one because you can get two for the price of, of this one. Compared to the V-Bead, it has a cardioid pattern. I think this is hypercardioid, which is a little tighter. So this will reduce the spill of the hi-hat and uh, the cymbals a little more if you place it right. But a cardioid microphone is actually more idiot-proof to place. Uh, just make sure, you know, the back is 
facing the high end. This is the dead spot, so to say. The V7X is a very versatile microphone. Not only can you use it on snare, you can use it on guitar cabs, um, you can use it on harsh vocals. If you don't want to buy an SM7B, check out this one on harsh vocals. So if you're in the market for a versatile, great sounding, dynamic microphone, I recommend this. On all audio files you will hear in this video, the snare was mic'd with this microphone. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk about Tom microphones. And guess what? <laughs> there it is again. Of course, a mic that sounds great on a snare will sound good on toms as well. Yeah, on toms it might be even tougher to place, you know, if, if drummers have the cymbals very close to the toms, this is not the perfect shape. But anyway, you know, you save some money. Okay, so my favorite tom microphone is this one. This is the Audix D2, great sounding microphone. I think you can call this one a modern classic. Audix were the first company to release what I call modern sounding, fast sounding, kind of pre-EQ'd sounding um, dynamic microphones for drums maybe 15 years ago. So this is a classic that everybody's using. So let's find out how the V7X compares to the Audix D2. Let's have a listen. They both sound great, right? I think the V7X actually sounds more natural, more organic in a way. The Audix sounds a little more pre-EQ'd. It has more attack, more like a higher mid bump there. And uh, the lows or the lower mid seem to be a little reduced, which makes it maybe a little more mix ready. But right now when I listen to both microphones, I, I prefer this one, to be honest. And some smaller EQ moves will make them sound very close. Again, this one is 79 euros. I think this one is 139 euros. So again, quite a bit more expensive than this one. So let's have another listen. You will hear the Audix has more attack, more higher mids, but also sounds a little thinner than the V7X. By the way, if you hear some kind of rattle on the Audix microphone. It's not the mic itself, it's the Audix drum clamp. Dear people at Audix, I love your microphones, but I hate this thing, it fucking sucks, okay? First of all, the microphone keeps moving all the time, You, I can hardly use this, and then there's a lot of rattle introduced by the clamp, so please come up with something new. And they're also fucking expensive, I don't like that. So I just used it in this example to show you how much it sucks, so that grang grang rattle thing you hear on the Audix uh, comes from the clamp, okay? So one more time, this against this. Enjoy. Next up, kick drums, boom. So first of all, I could not find any really affordable, dedicated kick drum microphone. They all lie somewhere in between 150 and 220 dollars. What I recommend here is getting either an Audix D6, a classic, great sounding microphone, very pre-EQ'd, look at this frequency chart, very pre-EQ'd for rock and metal. Two great sounding alternatives are the SE Electronics V Kick, which even has a few EQ presets that you can switch to make it sound more clicky and metal or more natural. And we have the Mic Tech, I forgot the name, PM something, which also sounds great. That is more or less a matter of taste which one you like, but they're all in this price range. If you don't want a kick drum microphone that sounds extremely pre-EQ'd and extremely metal clicky, you might want to check out the Shure Beta 52, which is another classic used by a lot of drummers in rock and roll and in metal. Like I said, it sounds less artificial and less processed, but it already has a kind of scooped, pre-shaped frequency range tailored towards kick drums. 
in the file you heard in the beginning, I was using the Shure microphone. But you know, you know what? I, I thought, what about this one more time? Let's just see what it does. It doesn't really look like a kick drum microphone, right? It just looks like a handheld vocal microphone, but uh, who cares? So let's try Shure Beta 52 against SE Electronics V7X. Here we go. And that is a surprise, that is a surprise. Again, the V7X sounds, let's call it more linear, more natural, less artificial, less pre-EQ'd than the Shure microphone, which can be good or bad. But you know, I'm surprised how well it handles both the transients and also the low end. I was expecting the Shure microphone, the dedicated kick drum microphone to sound a lot thicker but it doesn't really, a little bit maybe. So I'm surprised you can actually use this one on a kick drum. It has enough low end, it's fast enough. It's just not as pre-EQ'd as rock and roll or metal sounding like the other ones. Let's use a little EQ and listen again. So I'm gonna carve out the woody frequencies around 500 at a little high end, a little attack in the high end, and maybe just one dB of low end. Let's have another listen. Once again, this is 79 euros and any of the other dedicated kick drum microphones will cost you at least twice as much. Oh, there's one more thing I wanna show you. Um, I was checking out some new microphone preamps and I'm not a microphone preamp junkie. I'm mostly using APIs, expensive stuff I know. I like APIs, but I've been checking out those Cranborn Audio mic pre's which sound very very clean and so far i really really like them but the coolest part is that preamp has a mojo feature where you can dial in some harmonics and that is pretty pretty impressive so um this kick drum uh, does not have the kick drum we are using today does not have a lot of low end so i just boosted the mojo and th the result is impressive And that is impressive, especially because it doesn't really change uh, the level that much, just a little bit. I've never seen any preamp with a feature like this, but I just wanted to show you because I'm pretty excited about this. I'm sure, or I might do, let's do a preamp video soon. Cranbon Audio thumb feature on kick drums, boom, I like it. Let's continue. There are different philosophies about how to use overhead microphones. Here's how I do it. I regard the overhead microphones not only as cymbal mics, but I want them to cover the entire drum kit. So the overhead microphones are of course my main cymbal microphones, but they also give all the drum shells the body, the depth, the fullness they need. I know that other people treat the overhead microphones more like cymbal microphones. So what I need, I need a full and rather dark yet detailed sounding microphone. And that's why I use darker sounding condenser microphones like the AKG414, or I even use ribbon microphones who give you more room if you have a good sounding room that really helps and that just have a different texture. And, but if you use modern sounding ribbon microphones like the FC Electronics Voodoo or like the Rode ribbons. Um, I think Audio Technica also make a pretty modern sounding ribbon microphone with an extended 
high end, but that's what I use. I mostly use dark sounding condensers or brighter sounding ribbons. So I was looking for an alternative here, but I know that other people use brighter microphones. They will use pencil condensers. I'm not a big fan of pencil condensers, but in this video, I tried to find an alternative for each philosophy, an alternative for dark and full sounding overheads and an affordable alternative for your typical pencil condenser. Let's start with the pencil condenser side. So what I found is another microphone uh, from SE Electronics that I've been using a lot as a spot mic on hi-hat ride chinas. And this is the SE8. Is this still affordable? I don't know, I think it's 199 euros. I was talking to my friend Warren Ewart from Produce Like a Pro about this, and he basically said a decent or a good sounding condenser microphone needs to cost $199. That seems to be a magical frontier. And I agree. And that's the price for this one. And it sounds very detailed. Um, it doesn't sound too bright, which is what I like. And it has a pretty solid low end. We will compare this to uh, another very expensive microphone from SE Electronics. This is the Rupert Neve, what is it called, RN17. I think the pair is around $1,500 or something. So, you know, with a big transformer from Rupert Neve, those are uh, well very well known and very respected in the industry because they have a, a great, great clarity. The top end is quite hyped, but in a pretty sexy sounding way. Uh, I don't like all those microphones on drums, so I don't use pencil condensers on, on overheads. But anyway, I want to show you how they compare. So let's have a listen to SE8 versus RN17, 200 versus, what is it, six $700? High-end microphone versus cheap condenser, both in the mix and both soloed. Enjoy. Well, interesting, right? Not that different. I can hear that this one sounds a little more hi-fi. So this one has a little more mids somehow and maybe sounds a little spiky around 4K, but overall very balanced. The low end is nice. I actually prefer the high end on this one because it's less brittle than on these ones, which is something that works just works better with the symbols that I'm using at the moment. Uh, this might be a little more detailed yeah, but it's a lot more expensive. But you know, it's not only about details. This is rock and roll. So this is a great sounding microphone. It sounds quite natural. Uh, it doesn't sound too hyped in the highs. It has a good low end. It just works. So if you want a pretty natural and good sounding condenser microphone that isn't too bright, like most of the Chinese microphone, try this. Now let's move on with the dark alternative on overheads. So you might have seen that I've been using the SE Electronic Voodoos or the Rode ribbons on overheads. They both sound great, but they're too expensive for this video. So I asked SE Electronics to send me a pair of their cheapest, most affordable ribbon microphones that I had not tested before uh, for this review. And I expected to send them back, but they allowed me to yeah, make a little giveaway so you can win those microphones. Fantastic. I'll tell you what you have to do later. Anyway, this is uh, yeah, the cheapest ribbon microphone they have. And it will cost you, it's pretty much the same price like this one. So you can, you know, they're both cool on overheads, I can already tell you, but they sound very different and it depends on your taste. So if you are using ribbons on overheads, there are a few things you should know. First of all, it's a figure of eight, pattern. That means it will pick up 
the cymbals and the drums from below, but also the reflections from the ceiling. So you need, it shouldn't be too close to the ceiling. So you need a room that is a little bigger. Otherwise you will get some weird coloration from the reflections from the ceiling. And that's one thing, but you will always have a more roomy sound overall, which is something that I like, but it's totally a matter of taste. And overall, you will get a darker and more smoky sound with just a different texture, it's hard to explain. But this microphone, while not as great sounding as the Voodoo's or the Rupert Neve ribbons from SE Electronics, it has the typical SE Electronics ribbon sound, which is a lot brighter than your cheap as Chinese ribbon and which makes it so much more usable in a modern rock or metal drum context. So this will sound brighter than your typical ribbon. Remember that, which makes it sound closer to something like this. But okay, enough talking. Let's have a listen. Let's compare those two microphones and no processing at all. Let's have a listen. Big difference in character. This sounds more roomy, a lot darker, kind of smoky. This one sounds brighter, but also more direct, especially because of the cardioid pattern and more in your face. Now it depends on what you prefer. I prefer this. And the thing is, if we use some EQ and if we use a little processing, we can make them sound a lot closer. And I, in my opinion, it is easier to make a slightly dark and maybe smoky sounding microphone brighter, especially if it's a ribbon, they usually take EQ really well, compared to making a bright microphone sound darker. So let's have another listen. And I want you to concentrate on not only the highs where there's a very obvious difference, but also listen to how much more room information this microphone has compared to this one. You can hear it on the tom part and after. that is a matter of taste. They're both at the same price. Two alternatives, depends on your room, depends on your taste, but these are two cool overhead microphones uh, for starters uh, that will give you professional results. Ribbons are a classic as drum room microphones. Uh, especially they will pick up uh, a lot more room because of their pattern. I usually have them behind some gobos far away from the drums in a Bloomline setup sounds great. And my favorite microphone for this is the Rode Ribbon, which sounds fat, roomy, and punchy. So let's compare those pretty expensive active Rode Ribbons, fantastic microphones, to the cheaper SE Electronics.
here you can hear how much brighter they are voiced compared to a more traditional ribbon. And believe me, the roads are already brighter than your typical T-bone or you know something Chinese ribbon microphone. So as a room mic, I prefer the Rode because it just sounds beefier, but still the SE Electronics X1R sounds great. Not only for the money, it sounds great. And the fact that it is brighter just makes it a little more versatile for a lot of other stuff. I haven't tried it on guitars, but I should. I'm sure it, it works great on guitar caps as well, combined with an S SM57 or something. So this one is also usable as a room microphone. Uh, I still prefer like the beefier sounding Rode, but it's good. All right, so if you want to win these microphones, a pair of SE Electronics X1R, brand new, uh, this is what you have to do. First of all, you sign up to my email list. I want your email address. <laughs> so I can send you some dirty emails. Yeah, you'll find a link below to my email list. So you uh, subscribe there. That's part one. Part two is you leave a comment under this video, right? That helps me um, leave a comment, say something nice. And the third thing is, because you know, there, there are a lot of people on my email list and a lot of them might not be interested in, in microphones for whatever reason. So I really want to give away those microphones to someone who deserves them or who re at least wants them. So write an email back to the newsletter. When you get the newsletter from me, you just write back, just call the email SE Electronics X1R so I know what you're talking about and then you don't have to write anything. But you can write a, a nice love letter once again or, or tell me which beer you like or don't like, whatever. Tell me something that might help or not. I don't know. Okay, you subscribe to my email list. I know this is, I try to make this as idiot proof as possible, okay? You subscribe to my email list, link below. After doing that, you answer to the newsletter by saying SE Electronics X1R and by writing whatever the fuck you want. And then you leave a comment under this video. Got it? Let's go. If there are enough people interested in getting the audio files of this recording, I can send them to you. Uh, maybe we can talk about that in the next Beer with Cola video. If you are on my list, you will also get some exclusive videos where I drink beer and talk about stuff like this. So let's discuss this in a Beer with Cola video later. Uh, or let me know if you want to have those files or not. I don't know. You let me know. Okay, so before we have another listen to our final drum sound, uh, let me sum up what we have found. First of all, get this microphone. Great sounding, modern sounding, fast sounding, dynamic microphone. SE Electronics V7X. Can be used on snare, I do it all the time. Can be used on toms, and that was a surprise. Sounds great on kick drums as well. Needs a little more EQ, but it works. Can be used on guitar caps, bass caps, percussion, and harsh vocals, or even normal vocals, whatever. Great microphone, also looks kind of nice. I like the, the red-black combination. So, yeah, if you have more money, you can get like the smaller version, the V-Beat version of this one, if you are a rich kid. Um, and for overheads, you can either go the condenser route and get the SE8, which I can recommend, or if you want to sound darker and more smoky, uh, you go the into the ribbon direction and get the X1R. Um, even if this sounds like a promotional video for SE Electronics, this is what I found. I tried some other microphones as well, but this was the coolest stuff I found at this price, you know? But I'm pretty sure uh, they, will be, they will be angry because they want to sell more of those. And, and I, I told you, you can get this for half the price. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, SE Electronics. <laughs> That's all for today. Um, let's have another listen. And um, like I said, um, we see you. I see you in the next Beer with Cola video if you are subscribed to my email list. I'll see you again on this channel. I'm coming up with more guitar videos uh, next week, hopefully. Also a video about our new control room build over there and a lot of other really sexy stuff. So um, I love you all. I see you in hell, motherfuckers. Bye bye.
Okay, so uh, if you want to win those... <laughs> the old man. <laughs>